This episode of Tech News Weekly is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash TNW. Starting Tech News Weekly in 3, 2, 1... everybody, welcome to Tech News Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Zarian, and today we have a very special guest, a very special show. Uh, it's going to be a little confusing for me, because we got two Johns. Uh, we got, of course, we got Suncast here, John. Uh, John number one, how you doing? Hey there, how's it going? Uh, doing, going great, and uh, you're John number one today, but I'm going to call you Suncast, just to make it a little bit easier for all of us. You're not going to do like thing one, thing two? I could do that, I could do thing one, thing two. Uh, thing two here, uh, we got John from Front Page Tech. Speaking of thing two. How you doing, John? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Uh, Front Page Tech, I'm a big fan. You, so you say, yeah. I am a big, I am a big <laughs> fan, I watch your stuff. I, I'll just take your word for it. Take my word for it, please. <laughs> <laughs> for people who Never don't know. take his word for anything. No, yeah, John, like, yes, you know, you know I watch his stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know that you lie to me constantly. I do, I lie to you constantly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I saw that uh, episode that John did last week. Uh, that's okay. I, I watch your stuff stuff too. Oh, too. Oh, perfect. So, so we both watch each other's stuff. Uh, right. <laughs> John, you want to give a little summary about what Front Page Tech is before we go into the news oh, and before God. we go into ads? Because uh, you're doing something great. You're doing a lot of stuff on YouTube. You do a podcast as well. Uh, right. And you do a daily show, which is uh, very difficult. It is. Uh, I'm a dude that makes a bunch of noises on the internet and calls it work. And uh, we talk we talk about tech news daily, of course, on the show. But uh, it's more just uh, me making fun of companies and stepping my foot in a pile of crap. And that's uh, that's the show in a nutshell. Has anybody contacted you about like being pissed off at what you said? About oh, them? yeah. We <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, we reported a story about Facebook and we got contacted by them. We basically like ex- explained how uh, news feeds work and that you that your friends only ever see like 25 percent. Of what you post, and they weren't happy about it. You know what, though? That's absolutely true, because I don't see my wife's posts ever. Yeah, you're not allowed. Because it's so complicated. Like, the newsfeed, it, 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 the way that it assumes who I want to see, <laughs> uh, it's always the same person. Well, she has your last name, so they just they just don't want you to see her. Yeah, they're like, ah, you, you seem related. <laughs> you don't need to know what's happening today. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably right next to you. Screw it. Yeah. Uh, what's what's your website? What's your YouTube page? Uh, and then, of course... Uh, YouTube. Uh, I had to think about it. YouTube.com slash frontpagetech, and then frontpagetech.net will get you everything us-related. By the way, great name for a website, Front Page Tech. Very, uh, very to the point, huh? Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I got that one because if I had to choose a name for anything else, it would never be duplicated again. This I got super lucky with yeah. no one having that before I did. Well, that that's a really lucky, um, really lucky thing. I bet there's no guys from Queens doing this. No, no, I, I highly <laughs> doubt there's any other guys from Queens. You that is wait, identified. you're telling me you didn't check? <laughs> I did not check. No, I, I right. don't think I needed to check. Most people from right, Queens well. don't know how to use a computer, so that that speaks volumes. <laughs> So, guys, before we go into the tech news, I want to thank our sponsor, uh, Braintree. They've been here for a long time now. You know how you know how I feel about Braintree. I told you guys about a bunch of stories about people that I know that use Braintree, and that's the best way to tell you about it. I can tell you about the free, uh, the first fifty thousand dollars in transactions being fee free if you go to BraintreePayments.com/tnw. I could tell you about all the sites using it, like Hotel Tonight, Living Social, Uber, Airbnb. The list goes on and on. I could tell you about their superior fraud protection. They're great customer service. They're unbelievably fast payouts. The the support of all different types of payment methods, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, all different major credit cards, all different types of currency. But this is what I'm going to talk about today. Forget about all that stuff. I'm not going to tell you about that stuff. I'm going to tell you about a story about a guy that I know. Uh, this guy, Lewis, he's starting a new company. I'm not going to tell you what it does yet. I don't want to give away the idea. It's actually a brilliant idea. I just had a meeting with him. And he was telling me about his company, and he goes, you know what I'm using? I'm using Braintree because I heard it on the show, and it was so easy. This is a guy that learned how to code on his own. He's not a, a career programmer. He's not a career uh, coder. This is a guy that taught himself over the last, I want to say, 10 to 12 weeks coding. 
He implemented Braintree in his uh, in his mobile app. He's accepting payments. Uh, they've done test payments, uh, and it works really well. Uh, and and this is a great story. This speaks volumes. This is better than me reading any copy. This is better than me telling you to go to braintreepayments.com slash TNW. This is a first account. This is a story from someone that I've met, a viewer. Uh, and he's unbelievably happy with Braintree. So, guys, if you are looking to create an app, if you're a developer, if you have a company, and you're looking to accept different types of payment methods, you don't have to put in 10 different pieces of code. You don't have to do 10 different types of things. Uh, BraintreePayments.com slash TNW. Your first $50,000 in transactions are fee-free. I want to thank Braintree for supporting TNW and, of course, for supporting the GFQ Network. Uh, I love those guys. They're good people. So, guys, let's talk about technology. Let's talk about techniques. Let's do that. There's a lot of stuff happening. You know, we're in this weird limbo moment because it's right before Thanksgiving, and all these Black Friday deals are coming out, which we're going to have one on our website at gfknetwork.com. We're going to have a list of our picks. Uh, but when this happens, you know, a lot of the news is best deals. All these sites decide, you know what, we're not going to report any news. We're just going to talk about the good best deals, which I'm only going to mention some of those also today. But I want to focus on some of the stuff that's happening. And a major story that came out this week uh, is Google Plus's complete new redesign. I got it. I don't know if you guys got it yet. Did you? Do you have it changed over on your page? I do. Yeah. Okay. J Suncast. How about you? Yeah, I've looked at it. Um, I Briefly. think. Yeah, they they really cleaned <laughs> up the service. Well, you know that's been the problem with Google Plus, right? <laughs> every every it's it's very brief. Your experience on there. Uh, there's not too much interaction that I do on Google Plus. I probably should, considering I'm in the tech field and and a lot of the techies are on there. No, but it's okay, Andrew. It, it's okay. Okay, so John, do you use Google Plus? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. You 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 mentioned cleaning it. Uh, I'm I might get hate for this, but I mean, you can either clean the diaper every day, or you can just throw it away. Yeah. Well, the only useful thing that I find in Google Plus is the communities aspect, um, which is one of the things that they're now focusing on with Google Plus. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're going to focus on um, communities and collections. Yeah, communities and collections. So the collections are like their Pinterest type thing. Uh, I guess I don't know. Who knows? Well, I I, 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 I do. Uh, <laughs> I guess because I use a community. No, I use the communities por portion of Google Plus constantly, and I use it for like podcasting groups, and I use it to uh, I use it for some other some other groups also that I belong to, and. The, the biggest problem was that they always had, like, a bunch of stuff happening. And now it's, like, one feed, one feed, one feed, one feed. They've really cleaned up the look. But I don't know. How many times can you polish a turd, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, we saw the entire debacle with Google Plus initially when they merged it with YouTube. And, John, I know you could speak about this because I think that was a total disaster, right? Uh, for, yeah, for some of us, it was a disaster, uh, especially when it comes to organizing comments that has since gotten a, a little bit better for at least YouTubers on the YouTube side of things. Uh, it's still a little confusing. For example, if someone failed to ever connect their, uh, their Google Plus account with a YouTube account, uh, YouTubers and content creators can't reply to their comments. They, they just they just can't. Yeah, so what, so what is it when it says, like, YouTube user? That's all it says, YouTube user. Yeah, it means they never connected with uh, with their Google+. Plus. So you now, I mean, you have one Google account for all, you know, Google platforms, but some people failed to connect it with a Google account or their Google+, Plus account, and they just stuck with their YouTube account, and that's it. Yeah. And that's what that's referring to. You know, we, we had a major, uh, major confusion over our account on YouTube. Uh, I don't know how much... Well, Google Plus plays a part in this, but we wanted to split our accounts. So instead of having one major account on YouTube that has all our shows, we wanted to split everything and have it... Each show. For each show, we wanted a separate channel. We wanted a separate account. So right. you could... And you had to piggyback it off of our main one. Right. And you had to create an individual Google Plus page for each one. And <laughs> yeah. it, it really... It got really confusing because... You have to it. Well, you have to verify each one with a phone number, so you can't really do that because once your phone number is used twice, it tells you you can't verify any more accounts. It used to not be that way before they um, merged it's it. A, it's a little bit. It's a little better now. Uh, we started. We're getting ready to launch another channel, and it was it was pretty seamless. I mean, we just basically went into YouTube settings and said, okay, we want this new channel, and like you said, it just kind of like. Uh, took it off of our main channel. Uh, so now in our main Google account, we have that channel as another option. So we didn't have to, you know, make another 
uh, Google account to have that and verify a phone number. So I think that part's a little cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, they, they've really but fixed they that. Are trying to, they are trying to back Google Plus up, like, away from YouTube, at least right now. Well, it seems like they're doing that with everything with Google Plus. Um, I, I think as far as a community goes, Google Plus is beneficial because uh, it, it's easy to use and it's easy to understand. This is competing with the Facebook groups. And I actually think that the Google Plus communities are better than the Facebook groups. Uh, you know, they, but they are separating everything. You see that Google Photos is now lo no longer associated with Google Plus, and that's great. You know, it's its own individual app. Yeah. Uh, this is this is probably something good, but it may be a little too late for them. I don't think they're going to kill Google Plus, but I do see this as a service that people use less and less. Is it going to be like the Google discussions or the Google Usenet groups that they had for forever and still kind of exist in some form, and they still have never really completely killed off? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's going to be something they're always going to have, and they're just never going to quite kill off. Well, well, that's the thing. They don't need to kill it off. Um, it's G Google has a completely different business model than a lot of other companies where it doesn't matter what device you're using. They just want you on Google services so they can sell you ads and keep you on Google services. Yeah, yeah. And Google doesn't have a good relationship with Facebook either. So they don't need Google Plus for anything. But if they can get some people using Google Plus instead of Facebook, that's a win for Google because it's keeping them in that ecosystem. This is, again, uh, the issue that I've had from Google for a while, and, and this kind of goes into a different discussion, but the inconsistency with Google is uh, very frustrating for people, especially me. If you're in all different types of ecosystems, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Google, I'm on Twitter, I'm on all these things. So here's a bizarre issue that I have on my Android phone. If you have a Google Plus account and you have a Gmail account, what Google, the contacts list on Android, it actually looks at your Google Plus account because it thinks you're going to constantly update the images in Google Plus and not update them on your Gmail. All right. <laughs> but it's actually the opposite. What happens with Google Plus is nobody puts an image and, or it's this really pixelated, really low res image that they somehow <laughs> uploaded. So yeah. you have to manually change all these contacts on my, on my S6. They put out an update and they kind of fixed it, but not really on some of them. Wait, you keep you keep everybody's photos up to date yourself manually? Some of them, yeah. Why? What? <laughs> uh, because it doesn't. Because the way that my phone works, it doesn't always sync their latest photos via Facebook. But if there's already a picture of them, then why update it? Sometimes I want to look. I want to know what John looks like today. <laughs> I want to see your pretty face the way that I'm supposed to see it in current time, John. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Well, I'll tell you why I've, I've done that. Okay, I'll tell you why I've done that. So, why I'm, did you do it, Andrew? I'm going to tell you right now. So, um, I mean, I'm, I just I'm don't see that person. most people will go through the trouble of actually manually updating every single contact in the phone. Well, it's not every single there's, one. There's a change in the picture. So he, here, here's where I have to manually do it. So luckily for me, my phone. 70% of the time works with my Facebook contacts, so it'll it'll upload their, you know, it'll use their Facebook image, and it keeps it current. Except for, like, my wife. Again. Uh, singling her out. <laughs> again, singling her. I don't, maybe something with her account. I don't know. So for her, it doesn't update. Are you update, sure you guys are married? I don't, maybe not. Who knows? But for Jess, it, no, it doesn't update her images. It only updates it to her Google Plus image, which is like six years, seven years old. She doesn't care. She Andrew, doesn't use that. Andrew. Yes. yes. Just get a Mac. Just get a Mac. <laughs> My life would be so much easier. You know what? Their context list is a total disaster also. So they're, they're, no, they're not doing it better either. But I don't know how we ended up talking about contact lists here. I have no idea how we <laughs> veered into that, to that nightmare. But uh, he always goes off, You always go off on these tangents. Yeah, listen. That's, that's what we do here. That's what we do. John, why don't you pick us? Suncast, you pick a story. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about this uh, new Google feature that they rolled out. Um, Google Search can now stream apps to your Android phone. This is very interesting. Basically, they're virtualizing every application that they, they want to have streamed. And basically, when you do a Google search, if you don't have the app installed, Google can stream virtually that application to you because some apps might have more features than what you would necessarily get from the website, their mobile website, or just Google search results. So what so is now it doing? Google it's, is it's doing like a like a virtual stream of the application. Yes, yes. Within it's the kind of like team viewing into somebody else's computer and, and being able to see all their stuff. It, it's going to virtually stream that application to you. It's not actually going to install the application. It'll stream the application to you. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? 
what do you think, John? Do you think that's a positive or a negative for the user experience on, on uh, mobile? I wish I knew which John you were talking about. You, you John, John, <laughs> just, you, um, new John. I think it completely <laughs> depends on uh, how the experience is when they do stream the app. I mean, obviously, I haven't used it. I have an iPhone, so I won't. If it does come to iOS, I won't see it for a while. Um, but I think it. I, I'm okay with it because um, I can agree that you know running an app natively on your device is much smoother usually than going just with the with the mobile website. And some websites don't even have a mobile version, so there's that. Uh, but if it doesn't stream uh, with a with a good enough experience that I would expect to get natively, then I don't know if, if I'm going to like it. If I would like put up with it, or if I would just close the tab altogether. Yeah, sometimes I mean, sometimes there's you you don't want the app experience because it's possibly missing something, and you want the web experience. Um, right. Nobody says that you have to stream the application. Does it give you an option? That's what I'm curious. Does yes, it, give it you gives a, you okay. an option. Uh, it, it, it'll pop up um, a little thing that says that do you want to open this up in an application? Okay. Do you want to stream it virtually yeah, or whatever it is? I'm curious what the experience is going to be. The user experience on this is really going to be the thing that kind of. I think it's us. a neat concept, and yeah. whether or not it, it it works in execution or not, because um, there are times where you have an application. Uh, they give the example of a a hotel application where you're wanting to book something, and search results don't necessarily give you the greatest experience when you're searching for a hotel room for a hotel to stay at, whereas an application could do a much better job of displaying results for hotels that you're looking to stay at. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm curious I'm curious on how this is going to work. Uh, I want to continue with the stories. I want to talk about RDO and their filing bankruptcy and how this is a bigger story than it actually seems. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. But before we do that, I want to remind everybody, uh, if you want to help us out here at the GF Key Network and you want to support us, there's two ways you could do that. One of well, three ways. One, of course, supporting our advertisers whenever we talk about them. Two, uh, funding us on our Patreon page. If you go to patreon.com slash what the tech, you can fund us there. Uh, it goes to the entire network. It, it says what the tech, but it goes to the entire network. Uh, you can fund us anything. A nickel, a goes quarter, a dime. Goes straight to me. Goes all to John. <laughs> Suncast. Not John. John doesn't get any money from us. No, that'd be fine, too. Actually, you know what, John? John, you have a Patreon, right? Uh, sort of. So, uh, FrontPageTech.net is our way of like um, kind of working around Patreon. We basically created our own platform from scratch. And okay. That's what we yeah, so you do, you do viewer don't viewer funding for your projects. Right. Uh, right. Patreon.com slash what the tech is ours. You can fund us there. We have goals set up. Um, we're halfway to uh, to one of our other goals here. So uh, I think we might be introducing some other goals. We too, are. So. We are for the new year. We're changing that up also. Uh, also, yeah. the holidays are here, and this is the easiest way you can support us. Use our Amazon link gfq.co slash amazon that's gfq.co slash amazon bookmark it and whenever you purchase something click on that bookmark click on it make it make like a little tap on your desktop put it in your browser wherever you want to put it whenever you buy something we get a very small portion of it i was looking at my um i was looking at my sales report uh for yesterday and we had a killer killer day yesterday on there I think a lot of people so, are so i can go stuff. and buy a new pc now right now you know what that's how i that, that's exactly what i did John, Suncast. That's how I did it. That's how I. That's how I built so the production. Confused. The production machine. Like a we parent have here. being confused with the kids' names. I know. I know. <laughs> John, no, I mean Suncast. I mean, j- j- <laughs> um, use that link. GFQ.co slash Amazon. Help us out. Support us. <laughs> Andrew. Yes. Yes, sir. What is the weirdest thing that someone has purchased with that link? Oh man, I. You know what? I'm actually family friendly on this show, so I can't tell you. Okay. It was What's a the weird very family friendly oriented thing that's been sold. Uh family weird family friendly stuff? Uh, we had a canoe that somebody bought one. Yeah, someone Didn't bought they? like a someone bought like an eight thousand dollar canoe. Yeah, someone bought like an eight thousand dollar canoe. <laughs> All right. And and it luckily for us, it wasn't one of those things that had a cap like on Amazon with that. Some like if you buy a tech if you buy a computer, right? The most I could ever make is twenty five bucks from that. Huh. I can't you can't make more than that on one computer. But I guess they don't have a cap on a canoe. But you can bank off of a canoe. I did have someone buy a very <laughs> expensive coin. I'm talking like a couple grand, and I got money off of that. Or art stuff. Like people bought buy art, and I make money off of that. Uh, the, <laughs> this is why I love Amazon, because it, 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 it doesn't cost anybody anything more by the than way, their I don't know. I don't, I don't know who's money. buying what. I don't know who's buying what either, so that's the great part. Uh, a lot Thank of adults... Guys, apparently they're buying canoes, so... I know, uh, yeah, somebody bought a canoe. I don't know who. Uh, <laughs> the The weirdest thing was a very, very expensive adult 
device. <laughs> an, an adult canoe. Yeah. Uh, an right. adult canoe. Uh, <laughs> if if you're a fan of Howard Stern, you've seen uh, you've seen segments with this device. Oh my god! Yeah, so it was very expensive, and and I I couldn't believe it. Like that, they that's, sell that on Amazon. They do, yeah. Wow, they do. <laughs> they sell a lot of things on Amazon. A lot of things. <laughs> you just shocked. A lot of things. <laughs> you know what? I would actually love to do. You would know. I I actually looked up the terms of service, and I can't do this. I would like to do a show on the things that people buy on my Amazon affiliate program. I would love to do that. Yeah, just that would like be great. Just yeah. so like like the product like the weird thing from that week. Like those sites that perfect. show off the weird reviews. Yeah, like a weird review but the weird stuff that people are buying. Uh, so uh you know support us, uh help us out and uh, buy back, some canoes. Buy some canoes. Uh RDO has filed bankruptcy. Uh RDO was uh, kind of falling apart for a while. You know, they didn't, they didn't really pick up steam. Pandora picked it up for about $75 million. Uh, it but seems the, like a lot of money. It seems like a ton of money. For something that's being filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, so they have a very large, not a very large, but they have a pretty decent user base. And uh, I guess they're picking them up for the user base and maybe possibly the technology. Maybe they have some patents on the technology, and that's what's probably bringing the value up. But the bigger story here is that there were a lot of investors into RDO. Roku was one of them, and they got killed in this bankruptcy. Sony, another company that got killed in this bankruptcy. Uh, the bigger story from this is that not the bizarre thing is that Pandora's picking them up for $75 million. But the bigger story here is that the, the amount of money that was lost by investors on this company. Do, we, do you guys think that streaming music has kind of plateaued to the point that we have who we have now, and it's going to be very hard for anybody to break through. We've seen a lot of these companies go away. You know, Groove Shark was one of the first ones, and because they were one of the first ones, they 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 got killed legally. Uh, Apple Music has come in this. Google Music is into this. Uh, Pandora, uh, Spotify. Is there any room for another company like RDO? I'll go to Suncast first. Uh, it's interesting because in this day and age, currently, I think we have heavyweights established and this is just as of this year we 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 have spotify and now we also have apple music and and to a lesser extent you also have google play music and amazon, amazon Prime music. yeah yeah and i think in this day and age we have these heavyweights that are now kind of set in stone not permanently but almost set in stone and I think something could come along, but it's going to be much tougher than it was a year or two ago. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. John, what do you think? Are um, you a Spotify guy? Or are you a Pandora guy? Or are you an Apple Music guy? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've used all of them. I used to be a Pandora guy, Sp Spotify guy. I tried Apple Music, and that's crap. So yeah. I use Spotify now. But uh, it's interesting because I think John Suncast the other John. Now you're when doing it. <laughs> yeah, when he said uh, that we we sort of have heavyweights established, and I think we could expect to see newer platforms if the bigger guys didn't jump in, like Google and Apple. Those would are would be the only companies that I think could successfully jump in because Pandora is so big, Spotify is so big, and the problem isn't that they're big necessarily; it's that profiting. In this industry of streaming music is extremely hard, and Spotify is struggling with that, and they needed to come up with other ways to you know generate revenue, not just generate revenue, but also profit off of everything. And it's really tough to do in this industry because you have to license all that music, obviously. Um, and the only reason Apple can jump in and be so successful with it, successful, I use air quotes, because they have unlimited money pretty much, and it's not their only project. You know, Apple makes money off of everything else that they can help fund yeah. Apple Music. Uh, Google's the same way. It's not their only project. So I think if some if some you know random company came up and tried to bring about this new music streaming service, I doubt that it would work out. And I think that's why RDO fell too. Yeah, our RDO failed. Uh, it's just you're right. It there's, was there's largely very... because of marketing. Yeah. Uh, they just they they had a decent product. And it just took them a long time to really fully launch their product, and they never really put a lot of marketing behind it. So they never really were able to compete with something like Spotify. You know, it's like Rhapsody also, you know? Like, how, oh, are, they, how are they surviving still? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how, how are these companies surviving in this environment where you have so many of the big guys doing this? Uh, they're selling be, a lot of canoes. They're selling a ton, a ton of canoes, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, 
if you think about Rhapsody, Rhapsody's real player, right? Owned by real networks, you they, mean? Yeah. I, like, how is real network still surviving? I have no freaking idea. Yeah, like, it's it's bizarre if you think about it, how Big old brother. that company is. Oh, wait, they don't use that anymore. They don't use that anymore. Uh, I think we're going to see more of these uh, smaller companies either get gobbled up by the big guys or or they're just going to slowly go away. You know, when it comes there, to streaming music... There's a couple music, of niche ones out there, by the way. There is, there's yeah. There's one called um, Indie Shuffle, which is kind of cool. It basically just looks for songs off of SoundCloud, which is really neat. And and it's got... It's, it's a very niche product because they have stuff that you wouldn't normally find necessarily on Google Music or uh, Spotify. Yeah, I, I think the key in this market is to be a little bit more unique than the than the rest right maybe maybe you want to concentrate on uh you know house music or electronic music you know that's, that's i, I what don't know how long on. that would last so i think you can carve out a little niche for yourself but i don't know how long that would necessarily last i don't know it depends uh, you know with, with it, it, you know what this is like it's almost like during the napster days john you're a little too young to miss the you, you miss those <laughs> days man those were the days you used to go on there, come home, put your dot, you know, connect to AOL, load up Kazaa, load up. Well, this is before Kazaa. Load up Napster, <laughs> spend about twenty minutes downloading one MP3. It was great. I used to use LimeWire. I'm sure they can't come get me now. <laughs> since I said that, and I'm 22, but yeah, that's what I used to use. Yeah, it's it's uh, those were the days. Uh, this is interesting, and I know John is going to want to talk about this. Suncast, you want to talk about YouTube uh, fitting the bill for video makers to fight copyright? Yeah, down. so YouTube is no stranger to cases of copyright infringement, and now it's lending a hand to video creators who are involved in these disputes. The video hosting site says that it'll cover the legal fees for a few content creators that are fighting the demands of copyright holders with fair use claims. So far, it's only offering support in four cases, but YouTube says it doesn't rule out expanding that number in the future. So, John, please talk about this. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, this is this is a problem on uh, on YouTube, and I think creators can. If you're a creator out there, you definitely know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of uh, copyright. I think strikes everybody that are knows on what YouTube. you're talking about. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of c- copyright strikes uh, put on. Uh, a lot of videos on YouTube, and some of them are rightfully placed, but a lot of them shouldn't have ever been placed, Absolutely. and there's a few reasons for that. And this goes down to like very, very minor stuff, like uh, a lot of gameplay channels. You know, they'll they'll play the video games and they'll get they'll uh, be issued a takedown notice, not because they played the game, but because the uh, creator of the sound effects in the game noticed one of their sound effects in the gameplay, so they issued a takedown notice. Yeah. Yes, and there's an issue between. Is it infringing upon a copyright, and then is it free use? And something that they didn't mention in this story was a couple weeks ago, pro- probably a month ago actually, a guy named Ray William Johnson, who was who at one point was the biggest guy on YouTube, uh, has the show Equals Three, and that that show basically reviews viral videos, makes fun of them, makes fun of them, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, kind of uh, like the soup. <laughs> right. They got uh, uh, he got sued. By one of the people because he used their video and his video, and obviously he's making a ton of money off of that. Well, then he his company obviously had enough money to go ahead and go to court, and they won the court case based on fair use, which has now set basically a new standard on YouTube in terms of fair use. And I would assume that's why that's partly why YouTube is is like starting to take a stance. But yeah, uh, and I think Suncast can can speak a little bit to this, but uh, it's looking. Like um, they're going to kind of let the creators stay out of it, let YouTube handle it in and out of court, which would also mean that when YouTube wins, if and when they win, they get the the money too. John Suncast. So I mean, we we had a problem here uh, where I I'm posted, now known as John Suncast. John Suncast. <laughs> Uh, I had a problem where I recorded a video personally of me being at an event at a wrestling event. Mm-hmm. And it was after the show was done, so it wasn't even, uh, you know, it was like a minute and a half of the winner celebrating in the ring. And you could see, me, I recorded the, the winner, and then you could see me, and then I, you know, I pan to everybody that I was with. I got a copyright takedown from the content, from Ring of Honor Wrestling, from, I guess, whatever company that they hired to do this for them, to uh, bring, take down, you know, uh, copywritten content. Uh, and they and they claimed ownership over it over it 
I could, I tried to dispute it through YouTube. YouTube did not take it down. I had to contact the, the, the takedown notice people to say like, listen, I shot this myself. And they go, well, you have to remove it because we own the rights uh, because you were attending the event. So I had to remove a video with like 20,000 views. <laughs> yeah, and then it killed the channel too. And, and by the way, YouTube killed the channel because I couldn't upload more than 15 minutes because of this notice. I thought it was ridiculous because it wasn't, there was nothing copywritten about that. It was after the event. It's me and my friends, and you could see the guy in the background. That, that was it. What was that one issue that we had like several years ago where there was, there was sound effects that we had in, in our videos that were being picked up? Uh, with, with Spencer? It might have been Spencer, but you know how there used to be this this one company that would always say that, oh, this is our sound effect, so we're going to claim a copyright on it. Yes, 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 yes. Um, it was for Spencer's video, and it was like a ding. There was like in, in his bumper, there was like a ding. It was like wop, yeah. wop, wop, something like that. <laughs> and they claimed, wop, wop. yeah, and they claimed they would, they would put down takedown notices because of that sound effect in his bumper. I mean, that's crazy, right? Like, this is getting yeah. crazy. Uh, but it's good. I mean, it, it's interesting that YouTube is fighting in court uh, when, you know, they have this system in place. I would like them to see to kind of, you know, kind of realize what fair use is sometimes. Absolutely. Right. I think, in a way, I, it, this is just my opinion. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I feel like in many cases, YouTube seems to be a little bit more aggressive and not, not giving content creators enough um benefit of the doubt that they that they're using this in fair use before uh limiting the account or or doing some sort of punitive damage to the account uh john have you had any kind of takedown notices for images that you've used like a uh, products? no no not not images uh there's been some issues with sound effects and, and and music and stuff but every time we've had the rights to it so we haven't really had that much of an issue yeah but usually when i get images uh I don't know if you guys know, but for one, logos are fair use. You can use logos, especially yeah. w it's a different category for us because when it, it, we have different rules for when you report the news. Yeah. So it's kind of different for us. But if you like, when you uh, use Google Images, you can actually you know tell all the results to show up and be fair use. This so. is what it was. Now I remember what it was, John. We pulled up a website. I think it was like Nokia or Microsoft. I think it was Nokia. We pulled up Nokia's website to show their phone, and we got no. a takedown notice. Yes. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Now I remember one of the big ones that we had, and I couldn't believe ah. it. And the copyright holders, which was, I guess, Nokia or whatever, claimed no. that uh, that the images were... And it wasn't even them. It was like I pulled up an image from, like, Engadget. Like, I wow. pulled up Engadget's website, and I was scrolling, and I was showing it, and I got a takedown notice. And it's not like you're not giving them credit. I mean, the website is clearly listed. The, the, you, or like the viewers know what website you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Baffling. Huh baffling uh that that's weird. but i'm glad to see that they're kind of you know changing their tone yeah i this. hope they, i hope they do uh some more help with legal fees for content yeah. creators in the future i hope they kind of expand this so, this so i think is, it's good that they're being involved now yeah this is interesting uh facebook will now offer you to hide your exes after you have a breakup uh that starts to change today with a new tool uh, that will pop up whenever you change your relationship status. The tool will have three major components, limiting how much your ex sees on Facebook, limiting how much your ex sees of you on Facebook, uh, and limiting the people's ability to see past posts of you two together. Uh, this is, <laughs> I know a lot of people are going to be using this. Uh, why not just delete them off of Facebook? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, they were crappy I mean, that's been enough the in thing. your life. If they don't work out, things were crappy, you broke up. Why not just remove them? <laughs> John, what do you I mean, say? That's, that's what you should do. Uh, but I mean, yeah, everyone's done this. There's a bad breakup or whatever, and you don't want to see anything from each other, whether it's too painful or you hate them at this point, whatever. And you either stopped. have the choice to block them all together or unfriend them. And unfriending someone on Facebook is clearly the worst thing on this planet. So... Why not just take a break? I think it's. I think this is one of the very few uh, features that Facebook is offering that is actually kind of useful. Yeah, I think people are and use taking this. a break from your ex is fine. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, you could also unfollow them if you don't want to hurt their feelings. Right. You know how many people I unfollow on Facebook? Like I have unfollowed relatives. I've unfollowed <laughs> people that I see every day. I just have zero interest in what they're saying on Facebook. It's essentially and like the mute feature on Twitter. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. 
So, okay, so you think this is good? I actually think this is a cool feature. It, I, I'm not exactly sure what to think about this because <laughs> I've never been in that situation where I've had to worry about this. So yeah. So how about this? How about um? How about relatives? Right? How about your brother? What if you don't want your brother to see your Facebook? Wait, are you anymore? dating your brother? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I am dating my brother. <laughs> He does have really what nice do I long do when hair. I, when I bring up my brother, I mean, does it have to? Does it have to go with? Uh, how about em- employers? You know, like you maybe if if you you leave a company, you no longer want to keep in touch with anybody from that company, so you could actually limit what they see. I, I think this feature could be you know moved and gotten bigger. This is I like this. I, I think this is. This, you're about to get a ton of money for that idea. Yeah, see, <laughs> the employer button. I think this is something that comes in pretty useful, especially with uh, with a lot of people. Listen, my my attitude is if I don't want you to see what I'm doing, I'm gonna I'm not gonna allow you to see it. I'm gonna not be friends with you. Uh, but for other I people, see way I see many way more things that I want to see of you than I really should. Oh, you've seen <laughs> way too much, especially last <laughs> night. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, man, a lot of stuff. That I did not need to see. What did you see last night? <laughs> no, oh, what I saw last night in the Google Hangout. What did I do in the Hangout last night? Were, were you too doped up to, to remember what you did? Yeah, probably. With, you, with your lollipop? Oh, with my lollipop. Yeah, yeah. I was a little <laughs> doped up. I'm not even going to ask. Well, <laughs> oh, you know, there's nothing invalid. Oh, yeah, with that. the lollipop. Don't. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. You don't want to know. Mm. Uh, Amazon now lets Prime subscribers share their unlimited photo photo storage. Amazon will expand the perk of Prime membership to to give it better to give it a better chance of taking photo storage service like Flickr. Take it on like Flickr and, and uh, Google Photos. Uh, they're doing unlimited storage now. We'll go. You know what's funny? I have Prime. Uh, I I don't upload anything to their storage. The Prime storage, unlimited photo no. storage. Does anybody here use it? Do you use it, John? I do not. How about you, Sun no. Yeah, this is interesting because it actually unlimited storage sounds great. I just don't associate it to Prime. This is their cloud drive, Amazon's cloud drive. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a, a, a caveat here in that, in that you still have to, as long as you pay for Prime, you can have that unlimited space. But uh, once you stop paying for Prime or one of their cloud drive services, then that all goes away and they delete everything. Yeah, because I understand, but. If you, for some reason, forget, do they delete it automatically right away, or so do you have like a grace period? So I had a weird situation happen with Google and not Amazon. Um, I subscribe to their hundred gig plan. I think it's like one ninety nine a month, and my credit card changed. I got a new credit card. That one expired. So when it expired and it went to bill it, it couldn't bill it. So I it dropped me down to the fifteen gig plan, and I was over by like. 20 gigs but it didn't delete anything it just sent me a message like saying like hey there's a problem processing the credit card uh we've dropped the plan but you could you were still allowing you to keep what you have for the time being so you better update this so they don't delete so, anything they don't change anything they just give you they're just warning you how is it that amazon can un- offer unlimited storage but not microsoft yeah that's a very good question because, because microsoft- amazon sells canoes john yeah <laughs> <laughs> Amazon sells canoes. Perfectly no, it's, said. It's just one of those things. Microsoft makes this whole big deal about not not being able to offer unlimited storage, and here it is, Amazon. Hey, we have unlimited storage. Well, Amazon has yeah, Amazon has uh, web services, right? So, I mean, I'm sure it's so somehow Microsoft? related. Yeah, Microsoft has Azure services. Hey, John. By the way, your video froze. If you want to reconnect the video, no, I don't. Okay. Look at All you. Right. You're like you're, look at that chat. <laughs> there you go. There you goes. Spinning Wait and for spinning. It. Wait for it. Wait for it. You know, I think this is funny. I think we should just have a spinning wheel for the remainder yeah, of the show. This is hilarious. Here. Yeah. I think that's what we should use for your video. <laughs> we're we're approaching the end anyway, so it's fine. Um yeah, I don't know. I that that's a great question. Why why is it Microsoft offering? Because they don't want to. That's why. The fact that they've downgraded the fifteen gig plans down to five gigs. Uh, says that they really do not care about getting into this business and giving away because they laid off all so, their servers. They, <laughs> yeah, all, they all those people that want an unlimited storage can just go to get Amazon Prime. Problem solved. Yeah, problem problem solved. Guys, but still, it, it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth with what Microsoft did. Yeah, guys, uh, we're approaching the end of the show. 
Of course, I want to thank John for joining us. Front page tech, John. Uh, I can't see your pretty face, but <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. I can see you on my end, but whatever. I, I can't That's see fine. you, but front page tech. Dot net is a website you do you do uh three days a week and two days a week it's for uh viewers supported content right it's for the people right. supporting it uh great idea great site guys i i'm i'm a big fan and nobody believes me but i, I subscribe <laughs> to the channel i look at Why the content i watch it every day uh i haven't watched today yet so it's not out today okay. so you win so i win you're fine there you go uh front page <laughs> tech you can follow john on twitter what is it front page tech on twitter uh, you can find us, yeah, at Front Page Tech or me on Twitter, John underscore Prosser. Oh, perfect. Uh, you can follow Suncast. Uh, thank you, Suncast, for joining us. And thank you for hooking me up with John because uh, he's a good dude. See, I actually watch his stuff. I know. You're a big <laughs> fan. And you know what? You watching his stuff speaks way, way higher. His videos always validate my opinions. They do. So that's why you like it. Uh, you actually watch John and you hate everybody. So that, that says something about you. John dislikes yeah. everybody and everything. He he's never he never likes anything. So true uh, story. The fact that he likes John <laughs> is a big deal. You can follow Suncast on Twitter at Suncast. Uh, he does Tech News Weekly and he does everything else here at the GFK Network. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. You can follow the GFK Network at GFK Network. Uh, subscribe to the show, guys. We're everywhere podcasts are available. We're going to be putting out a list, our Black Friday list, our our holiday list this Monday. So uh, if you're if you're looking to buy some stuff, uh, we're going to put together a really detailed and really uh, really good list this year of uh, of products that we like. We're going to provide our Amazon link. You could use the link there. I want to thank our sponsor Braintree, and of course, of course, uh, thank everybody supporting the show on our Patreon, you know, our Patreon page. And uh, that's it for this week. We will be back next week. It'll be the day after Thanksgiving. So uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the states and uh, gobble gobble.